Here is a tip from the DeWitt Wallace Library. Hello, today I'm going to talk about doing some concept mapping, which is a really good thing to do when you're either A, first starting to think about a topic and you're trying to narrow down from a really big topic to a smaller topic. It's also good when you have even a smaller topic and you've done some pre-searching. Uh, maybe this is a time when you've put together a brief bibliography already for a project proposal or something like that or some other kind of thing like that, or you've done, you know, you've looked at maybe four or five articles, looked at a couple of other books or other materials, and you're, now your head is swimming with different ideas and you need to get some onto pen and paper and move on to the more robust aspects of writing your paper. So here's some guidelines for doing a concept map and using a targeted concept mapping technique uh, to dive in and get into the deep water faster. So this is pretty typical timing here. This is a, uh, a paper that I might be doing on a topic related to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20, um, verses 1 through 20. This is the kind of project you might do for a religious studies class where you have to take a, a piece of um, a written religious text and then uh, do some deep sea diving into it and uh, really get into some individual content or an aspect of a particular text and then draw it out and make some relevance. So I've got a couple books here. I've got this particular um, Old Testament library book here where it has the section, the commentary on that part of Deuteronomy. I've also got a um, Jewish Publication Society uh, commentary on that section of Deuteronomy. I've pulled out a couple of journal articles from uh, Atlas database. And uh, so I've done some reading, I've done some pre-searching, and now I'm ready to get into this concept map and figure out what it is exactly that I'm going to talk about. So here we go. So I know that my big topic here is Deuteronomy, right? And I'm looking at chapter 20 verses right now, but my big topic is verses 1 through 20. Um, and I might not key stay with those. I might end up picking a particular verse to work with. Uh, for example, um, this article, both of these articles have to do with just verses 19 and 20 uh, relating to siege craft uh, and the, the idea of sieges in, that are talked about in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is all about Jewish laws on warfare among other things. So those are some things I might start putting into here. So I might just look at um, Siege, and uh, which is 1920 verses. I might look at, it also talks about trees in here and what you do with um, agricultural land that you keep. There's also some things about what you do with the people. Um, do you, there's a big uh, push to kill people or uh, assimilate them as uh, sort of as booty from that. Um, so I might also be looking at, um, there's also aspects of women too that aren't terribly flattering always. So women, so there might be uh, indications of women, you know, to the victor goes the spoils. Sometimes the spoils look like rape. Uh, and so uh, there might be some violence in there that I might want to bring out in my paper as I'm thinking about it, where I, where I want to focus in on. Might also want to look at where the role of the priests are, because there's a lot of mention that this is run by the priests. Why would the priests be in charge of war? Um, so I'm going to add that in here uh, in the, the Bible. And then, I don't know, I don't really have a, a fifth one right now that I'm thinking of. So, you know, maybe that's fine for right now. I don't have that fifth one for right now, so that's okay. I'm going to pick on one of these to drill into. And um, right now, um, for this first issue, I think I'm going to look at um, the aspect of siege, partially because I've already got two articles on it, and I want to see where that takes me. But I also think that it might be interested here, because as this one talks about, there's a relationship to man and the environment. And that's kind of interesting here. So, uh, and this also talks about the trees. And so I'm, maybe I'm, I'm sort of inter interested in this intersection here. How are these two things gonna be relating to one another? 
So that's fine. Now how do I drill that down? So I might come in here and take this more detailed concept mapping strategy, uh, focus concept mapping. So my main topic is still warfare and do um, chapter 20. And now I'm kind of looking at verses just 19 and 20. Well, my big topic is still verses 1 through 20, but now I'm looking at just the verses 19 to 20 and trees and um, siege. So I'm looking at that intersection there. So what do I mean by that? So I'm looking at biblical time. So that's definitely happening in what's, you know, Israel now, Palestine. So I might need, what additional information might I need to collect? I might want to look at some maps, some historical maps. So I might want to do that. I might, um, I'm, also, I'm looking at biblical time. I don't even know exactly when that time is. So, um, more about that time in history. Who are the players in that area, for example? And um, so, and I'm interested in siege, I'm, and so, what, and the tr trees aspect, you know, it, what, uh, what were the environmental concerns? So my experience with this topic, I really don't have any. I mean, I haven't fought any battles. I haven't been in any war. I've certainly been an observer of lots of Middle East war. So I might make a note of that. Uh, and uh, back and forth between the Palestinians and Israelis. And both of those uh, peoples have a, take a lot of their uh, theology and push that into what they do with those uh, battles so that might be something that I want to be thinking about why does this matter um, because clearly this still plays out in the area this that's important because it, um, it has a current today impact um, these things are still playing out Uh, and uh, we still see that destruction of property uh, as part of battle um, or not. So what are some of the other things that I might be thinking about? What outcome do I want by bringing some attention to this? Um, well, I, what I want to do is I want to see, um, I want to demonstrate how this historical, historical in the sense of uh, the Bible as a story, uh, and how these texts uh, influence today's culture. Now, as I write that, that certainly starts to sound like a thesis statement. Uh, and so right now, by spending, this has all been about five, ten minutes, uh, not even that, about that long. Uh, I've got a question, I've got a thesis statement here, basically. I have a, why is this important? I have a hook. I have some scope. I have some more information that I probably need to collect. I have some connections to the Middle East wars. And now I can start digging in more deeply here. And I also probably have a way to start diving into these texts and start to say, well, how, what are these commentaries that I have here and here and these more specific articles that address this? Uh, how are they tying to this topic and what can I get out of there? And then what information do I need to be looking at is, um, to go to next, and that's this here. So that's a good introduction to how to start digging into a topic that you maybe don't know very much about, uh, maybe you know a little bit about, 
and uh, you're trying to figure out what you need to know more about and how to share that interest or what you're interested in with the people that are going to be your audience. So you take the time to do that concept mapping. You can come back to it multiple times and keep refining questions, keep using that as a tool. You can also uh, use some of the other things that you generated with that bigger list. Maybe this topic ends up not panning out the way I wanted it to, but I can still go back to these original documents. And these become working documents as I progress through my research. And so that's a tip from the DeWitt Wallace Library.